Hi, my name is Tony Santo and I'm a large format photographer. This video is all about using Fujihun's 5 liter express kit to develop color negative film utilizing the complete C41 process. Before we get into this video, I'd like to acknowledge my sponsor, Freestyle Photographic Supply out of California. They were kind enough to send me a Fuji Hunt 5 liter express kit to develop my color negative film and to produce this video to show everyone how the process is utilized. What I really appreciate about Freestyle Photographic is the fact that they support education. They are well connected with many high schools and colleges and universities across the United States and support teachers and professors in their photographic endeavors in the classroom. What I also appreciate about Freestyle Photographic is the fact that living on the West Coast and their location being in California, I can place an order in today for some supplies that I need and in about a day or two, I can get those supplies. So if I'm in a rush to complete a project, I can always rely on Freestyle Photographic to get me those supplies in the time frame that I need. The Fuji Hunt kit comes with developer parts A, B, and C, bleach, fixer, stabilizer. The kit also comes with instructions. However, I'll warn you, you're going to need a magnifying glass to read all that fine print. Let's talk chemical safety. Yes, I know, we've all heard this before. Chemicals are hazardous to humans. Photographic chemistry is no exception to that rule, and I just want you to be safe. So I would get yourself a box of rubber gloves to protect your hands from any skin irritation or inflammation. I would get yourself a face shield, some goggles, heck, even a combination of the two in order to protect your eyes from any splatters of chemical that get into your eyeballs. Even a small droplet can cause serious irritation, inflammation, and pain, and possibly even loss of eyesight. I would also get yourself a face mask like this one that scrubs out formaldehyde. Stabilizers like this one contain formaldehyde, which is a known carcinogenic substance, and you don't want to be inhaling this stuff for long periods of time because that it could increase your risk of cancer. The other thing that's important in reducing inhalation of these chemicals is to make sure that the room that you're developing your film in has plenty of movement of air. Cycling that air in and out of the room is so important to making sure that fresh air is always being introduced into the room so you minimize your exposure to any of the vapors that may be in the air from using this chemistry. And the last thing you should do is to cover your skin. So whether it be long clothing, long sleeve shirt, pants, or a lab coat like this one in order to protect your skin from any splatters so that you don't get any possible skin irritation or inflammation and pain. So the bottom line here is please protect yourself. One of the tips that I'd like to share with you from being a scientist is getting yourself one of these composition books. I use this to keep track of the amount of chemistry that I've used over the years and how much film I've processed through that chemistry which helps me determine my efficiency and whether or not I can see if I can squeeze out more efficiency that is more film developed per given chemistry that I've mixed up. It also helps me keep track of the overall volume of chemical that I've made up so that I don't have to go back and recalculate that volume for a given amount of film that I wish to develop, especially for black and white. It's really useful to have your notes all right in front of you. I also keep track of each of the times that I develop film and if there are any problems that come up and I make note of that problem so that I don't repeat that mistake in the future. So it's been a really useful tool to have that keeps everything all neat in one place. Just like you've seen me do with my E6 process, I went ahead and purchased four 5 liter containers labeled the top, the front, and on the side. The side also has the mixing directions to make it extremely easy to mix up the chemistry. I've labeled my measuring cups, I've labeled my spoons, it's all color coordinated, all in an effort to keep organized and minimize the risk of cross-contamination. If the chemicals mix when they're not supposed to be mixed because there's residue left over, that will weaken the effect of that chemical and therefore affect your development process. So by staying organized and purchasing these inexpensive supplies for each and every chemical, you will minimize the risk of cross-contamination and make your process run so much smoother. Now these are chemicals that are in their concentrated form 
and thus they have to be diluted with water in order to make up the five liter working tank solutions for each of the four steps in the C41 process. Those steps being developer, bleach, fixer, and stabilizer. I'm going to show you how to mix those chemicals up coming up next. To dilute my concentrates, I'm going to use distilled water that I picked up inexpensively at my local grocery store. The reason why I want to use this over tap water is because if there are any impurities in the water, they may adversely react with my chemistry, and so I don't want that affecting my development process and negatively uh, affecting the way that the film turns out. So the easiest way to minimize that risk is simply to use distilled water. So my first step is to place the distilled water into each of my containers. So the developer here is calling for 4,500 mils of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right into the container. Up to the four liter mark is what I'm gonna do first. And then I will finish it off by measuring precisely using my measuring cup the remainder of the 500 milliliters until I get to the 4,500 milliliters. Now I'm going to measure out 500 milliliters. So I'm right at 500. I'm going to pour that into my tank. And that should be right between the five liter mark and the four liter mark to give me 4,500 milliliters. So that's the proper amount of water that I'm gonna need in order to add the remainder of the chemicals here. Prior to putting my chemical concentrates in my containers, I make sure that I don't have any leaks, especially if I've used the container multiple times for developing. I have found that being a little too rough with these containers can cause micro cracks that then cause the container to leak and I have lost chemistry that way. So it's really best to make sure that you don't have these leaks using distilled water so you don't have to buy an additional kit to replace the chemistry that you just lost. So it's always a good idea to check your containers, especially after they've been used several times. To dilute the developer, begin by adding part A to the tank, mix for 30 seconds, add part B, mix for 30 seconds, add part C, mix for 30 seconds, and finish by adding 15 milliliters of distilled water, followed by mixing for one minute. To dilute the bleach, add the full bottle to the tank and mix for one minute. To dilute the fixer, add the full bottle to the tank and mix for one minute. To dilute the stabilizer, add the full bottle to the tank, mix for one minute, and finish by adding 50 milliliters of distilled water, followed by mixing for one minute. Once mixed, your chemistry should look like this. According to the instruction manual that came with this kit, once you mix your chemistry, you have about four to six weeks for the developer and about eight weeks for all the other chemicals before they go bad. While the Jobo is not necessary to utilize this Fuji Hunt kit, it certainly does make your life so much easier. It does two important things. One is it maintains the temperature inside this drum at the critical temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius. That's important because you want to optimize the color development process, especially with that first uh, step, the developer. It's so critical that the temperature is maintained very tightly, plus or minus 0.15 degrees Celsius. And this machine will help you achieve that. Now you could use, if you're going to do this at home without the Jobo, you could use some shallow pans with hot water in them at the appropriate temperature and then put your uh, developing tanks in that water, but you have to work quickly and obviously you're going to have to continually you know, find a way to heat that water if you're going to do lots of processing. So it's not as convenient. This certainly makes it easy. Now the other thing that this thing does is you can see the machine is rotating the drum backwards and in reversing directions and rotating it forward. It's agitating the chemistry inside so that you're passing fresh chemistry over that film to optimize the development process. So really simple device. It's very expensive, not necessary, but it will make your life a whole lot easier. Be sure to adjust the drum's water bath to the appropriate level based on the drum you use. Please consult your Jobo's operating manual for further detail. Precisely measure the amount of chemistry you'll need based on the drum you're using and pour into the Jobo bottles. Place the Jobo bottles into the water bath and allow ample time for the chemistry to reach 37.8 degrees Celsius. Be sure to change the lever on the Jobo to the corresponding tank size you'll be using. Down is for smaller tanks, up is for expert drums. 
After loading your film into the tank, allow the drum to warm up on the processor for 5 minutes. These are the processing times I adhere to. Developer, 3 minutes 15 seconds. Bleach, 6 minutes 30 seconds. For the water washes, I lay out 6 cups and wash the film for 30 seconds per cup of water. Fixer, 6 minutes 30 seconds. For the water washes, I lay out 10 cups and wash the film for 30 seconds per cup of water. For the stabilizer, I complete this either in a tray for sheet film or my measuring cup for roll film for 1 minute and 30 seconds. An important tip regarding developing times is that all of the steps, except for the developer, won't be adversely affected if you go over in time because the action of the chemical goes to completion. That is, the effect of that chemical will no longer result in further reaction with the film once the chemical reaction is complete. So if you go over in time by a few minutes, your film will be perfectly fine. Just remember, this tip does not apply to the developer. As you can see, the step that has the narrowest range of allowable temperature fluctuation is the developer. This is a critical step for color development and should be tightly controlled. The remainder of the steps have generous latitudes, making it easier for developing without the Jobo processor. Jobo produced many different developing tanks over the years. These are the ones that I own and the corresponding amount of chemistry that I use per run of development. You'll also see the total amount of film you can process if you only used one type of drum per the entire 5 liters of chemistry. Once your drum has been heated for 5 minutes, the development process is simple. It's just a matter of pouring your chemicals into the Jobo, processing each step for the amount of time shown earlier, and dumping out your used chemistry for disposal according to your local regulations. It's important to note that I use my chemistry for one-shot processing. That is, I only use the chemistry once and then I discard it. The Jobo uses such a small volume of chemistry that it weakens the chemical to the point where you have to extend the developing time for each step to ensure that your film is processed correctly. These time adjustments can be found in the instruction manual that came with the kit. That being said, the instructions recommend that the developer be used only once to maintain professional standards. The fun part is opening up the drums to see the results. As I mentioned earlier, depending upon the size of the negative, I either use a tray or a measuring cup to place the film in the stabilizer. If you do this in your drums, it can lead to an accumulation of stabilizer gunk, which will make it difficult to load your film and also results in cross-contamination of your chemistry. This accumulation of stabilizer gunk is not easily washed out. The last step is to hang your film to dry for about 30 minutes depending upon your environmental conditions. I was able to process 20 sheets of 8x10 film and 21 rolls of 120 film using this 5 liter kit. Overall, this is a great kit that is easy to use and is appropriately sized for someone like me who doesn't shoot a lot of color negative film. Here are a few images that I developed using this kit. So once again, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Freestyle Photographic Supplies out of California for donating the C41 kit that I utilized in this video to develop my color negative film. I really appreciate their support in this video endeavor and hope that you as a viewer will consider them for your photographic supplies. As always, thanks for watching.